Hey, this is Dr. Corey Glenn with Blue Sky Bio, and I'm going to be showing in this video something that I've gotten quite a few uh, number of questions about that people seem to be uh, a little unclear of how to accomplish, and that is how to build in uh, the timing into your implant placement based on your surgical guide. Now that becomes a very important thing when you're dealing with angled multi-unit abutments, and this is a good example, and it's a, it's a good one for a video because as you can see here, there's only one spot this implant can go, narrow ridge, um, I can't really alter my implant position. And if we just went with a straight uh, abutment, you would see that the uh, screw access hole would be going right through the middle of the facial of that tooth. Aesthetically, that's not gonna fly. And so one of the uh, things that Blue Sky Bio offers is an angled tie base. And so you can see that here. Um, we have those angled tie bases in both a engaging and a non-engaging. So honestly, the, uh, the easiest uh, thing for you to do if you're doing this as an immediate load temporary would be to do this in a non-engaging and that way you can spin it around and just put it wherever it needs to be if you were gonna immediate load this. However, that doesn't help you uh, if you want to use a stock angle tie base come time for the restoration because at that point, implants integrated, your timing is what it is and you're just gonna have to make do with it. So what we'd like to do is make sure that we nail the timing uh, on the day of placement so that when we place the, uh, the implant, it's gonna be lined up correctly for this implant to receive an angled tie base in this exact orientation. Okay, so let me just kind of go through and show you my implant positioning. Uh, there you can see it. And I've placed on an angled tie base and with angled tie bases, you do have the ability to uh, play with the timing. So let me unlock my implant right here. If you were to hover on this, uh, if you just grab the blue ring, that is changing the timing, okay? You see how, that's what I mean by timing. It's, the implant position is not changing, it's just the degree of rotation, all right? I'm gonna undo that because I had this where I wanted it. So the implant is in the right orientation and we wanna make sure that we translate that over to the mouth so that when everything goes in, it's gonna be exactly the same. All right, and if you were doing this on a multi-unit restoration, you could just multiply this times however many implants that you have. So let's uh, zoom in here and look very closely at this implant and abutment. Okay, so this is uh, how the orientation is going to be of the little slot or the, the positive uh, node that's on the tie base. And now let's turn the abutment off and see how that's oriented within the implant. And as you can see, there's a flat right here being a hex. The other flat is gonna be directly across from it. And so here again, flat right here, flat here. If we turn the abutment back on, you see the flat corresponds to the node that's on that. All right, so we need to make sure that the implant timing is just like this when we go to place the implant. So how can we do that? Well, one option is to go over here uh, to your surgical guide panel. I've already made the surg uh, surgical guide. You'll be able to see this uh, when I turn this on. All right, so you can see the surgical guide. This is the timing that we've accomplished on this implant. And here again, you can see flat, flat. So we need to make sure that we rotate and have a flat exactly aligned through this spot. So what I'm gonna to do to ensure that I accomplish that is I need to make some kind of a mark on the uh, surgical guide itself so that I can rotate it into that position. I'm gonna go into the guide panel and I'm gonna use just a period, okay? I type in a period there, you can see it right here. This is the text embossing tool and I'm going to orient it where I'm looking straight down the implant And the more you zoom out, the more that's going to be uh, a, a bigger object. And we probably want it right in there. Okay, so once again, if you see here going from right through this area, that's going to ensure that I'm in the timing. If I can rotate this implant in and guarantee that the flat indicator of the driver is lined up to this little dot that I've created, then we should be good. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and emboss that into my surgical guide. Oh, got to select the right model. So let's choose the guide with windows. Go back down here and let's emboss it. You can emboss or engrave. Both of them will work. 
and I just want to now zoom in and really scrutinize this and make sure if I go straight through there, it looks like it's perfectly lined up with that. All right, so this is going to be our surgical guide that we print, and I can go ahead and print that. Go over to my Sprint Ray Pro software, and we're going to bring that model in off the desktop. And this is Guide with Timing Indicator. And now we just need to support this where we can print it. So fix the overhangs. And again, if you zoom in real close here, you're going to see that that is integrated in here. And that is going to be an overhang, so I need to add a support uh, to this model. So edit supports. But in any case, there it is now supported, and I can be sure that that is going to uh, be carried through to the actual surgical guide. Now, I'm kind of mixing a little bit of analog into this, and so one of the other things that I would probably uh, benefit from having if I wanted to do a working model of this one thing with these angled tie bases is you don't yet have the ability to stick a virtual scan body onto this um, tie base, okay? So if it were a straight tie base, we could just uh, go with a, a scan body as our abutment and export that and then pull that into the design software, but we don't have that yet. So I'm going to have to actually generate a physical model, <coughs> excuse me, and then scan that with a uh, scan body placed onto the tie base that I'm going to use. All right, so that's what we're going to do, and to do that, I'm going to need to generate a stone model. All right, here's the stone model, so I'm going to export that. And once again, pull that into the software, and let's print it. This one, I can just put the base right on the build plate and then rotate it however I want it. And now I'm ready to print. So I'm going to use Sprint Ray Die and Model Tan, 100 micron thickness, and let's go ahead and print it. Okay, so before we go to the printed models, I wanted to show this picture. This is the Blue Sky Bio fully guided keyless kit implant carrier. So in that kit, there's two carriers, your standard eight and a half millimeter offset, which has the same built-in master key. And then you have this one, which is the variable height offset carrier. Uh, if you don't understand what that is, you can watch the video that we have on that. But the important part for you to know is whichever of those two you use, I just grabbed the variable because it was handy. What you should notice is that there's little notches. So you're going to see six notches up here on the built-in stop. And those notches correspond to the flats. Okay, so you can see right here a flat going uh, this way and corresponding to that notch, same thing here. And so that's going to be really useful in a case like what we're doing to ensure that we're orienting that flat exactly to the dot that we made on that surgical guide. Okay, so I've finished uh, printing the model and I've printed the surgical guide, which you can see right here. All right. I uh, verified the fit. Everything is fitting together nicely. And you will notice I uh, actually, after the video, I went back and I hollowed that model because you do want a hollow model like this. All right, so surgical guide fits great. And let me show you what I've done. I have taken a burr and just basically um, made a big hole right through where that tooth is going to be, but leaving the contacts um, of the adjacent teeth in uh, untouched. And so now what we can do is assemble our surgical guide and let's do mock surgery. Now, no need to drill because we didn't have a uh, solid model. Back in the day when I used to do this, you would have to pre uh, pour up a stone model and then actually chew up a bunch of drills trying to do mock surgery on your uh, model, trying to get a, a working model beforehand. With this, there's no need to do this. So I've assembled a, an implant analog to the guided driver and I've seated that down to depth. You can see here when when you use the variable height driver um, 
the stop becomes the little cover screw which is screwed into the side of this so now that's bottomed out and what we need to do is now turn this until a flat lines up you can see I've kind of put pencil marks on the uh, the little period that I created in the software and that looks lined up to me so everything is assembled the analog is pushed down completely and now I just need to lock it into that position and I'm going to do that with a little flowable composite so you want to engage the anti-rotational portions of that analog because you don't want any rotation that's the whole reason we're doing this is to dial in the timing so I'm going to get flowable composite up into all the nooks and crannies of the anti-rotational portion and then I'm going to extend it over to the model itself and I'm going to wrap that edge just slightly and same thing over here I'm sorry I'm so what I'm doing is I'm just putting flowable composite onto this I'm having a difficult time keeping everything within the view I'm trying to look at it with my eyes and when I do that I invariably get out of position for the camera so Apologies for that. Alright, so once again, just give it a little press, make sure everything is dialed in there, and now you can come in and cure that. Okay, so very quickly, we can now have a working model. And once again, if you look, you're going to see that the uh, notch that I pointed out on the model, which is right here, is in perfect alignment with the little dot that I've created. With that done and with the an analog in place now, as you can see, this is not mobile. It is fixed in there. We can disengage the driver. And now we have a working model. All right. And what this allows us to do is now go ahead and put on the engaging angled tie base. And this is the angled tie base that you're seeing right here. The screw that goes into this is different from most of your abutment screws, and so you can't use this interchangeably with uh, just any random tie base screw. You've got to use the one for the angled multis, and you've got to actually use the uh, ball tip driver that we sell as well. That's the only one that will be able to screw it in uh, off axis like that. So this is a little difficult to grab I'm going to get a pair of uh, tweezers here that can hold this in place and I'm going to fit that into the tie base. Remember how we had the notch oriented towards the lingual? Okay, and that dropped in there perfectly. I don't know how well you can see it, but you see that the notch is perfectly oriented exactly the way that we had it digitally. So what does all this mean? This means that if you went ahead uh, and you wanted to do an angled restoration, uh, angled screw channel restoration, you could have this thing made ahead of time. Go ahead and mill out your PMMA or Emacs crown, bond it ahead of time to your tie base, and if you'll just follow those instructions when you deliver um, the implant with the guided driver, then you'll know that your restoration is going to fit perfectly, and you're going to know also that once it's integrated, uh, three, four months down the road that you'll be able to use this stock angled tie base and have everything lined up. So with that working model, I now put a scan body onto it, uh, the kind that just slides over a tie base, and I'm using the CareStream 3600 intraoral scanner just to scan my model, and this is going to give me a digital working model. You know, we could have done this all digital without a real working model if this hadn't been an angled tie base, but that does complicate things slightly. And now you can take that uh, digital model into ExoCAD or Blue Sky Plan or 3Shape and now design this just as if it were a normal tie base restoration. So I have a Z4 uh, mill from VHF and I used that to mill the crown that I just designed. And uh, it's been milled, fit was great, it was in Emacs, so this is it coming out of the firing oven. And uh, this just needs to be bonded now onto the tie base. And here you see the final milled crown bonded to the tie base. So now the doctor that I'm sending this to has a 
Screw retained restoration on an angled tie base. You can see how much uh, angle correction was done. Remember, originally it was going almost through the uh, gingival third of the tooth, and that 20 degree angled tie base has corrected that. And Doc is going to be able now to place his implant, and he's just got to make sure that he orients that flat of the driver to the spot on the guide that I indicated. And if he does that, then this restoration should seat perfectly. Uh, even with the, the full engaging hex on it. It should be delivered uh, with no problem, and this will ensure that as he uh, comes time for the final restoration, if he doesn't just leave this long term, that everything is going to be lined up uh, for that one as well.